Welcome to Palanga, the summer capital of Lithuania. If you find yourself in Vilnius in the midsummer and it feels empty, that means that everyone is here instead. You will find Palanga municipality in the west of Lithuania, right on the coast of the Baltic Sea. It is three and a half hours away from the capital Vilnius and less than half an hour from the port city Klaipeda. Palanga municipality population reaches around 17,000 in 2022. Palanga municipality has two major resorts, Palanga and Šventoje. Palanga is the most popular seaside resort in Lithuania, as it is much easier to reach than Nida in the Kuronian Spit. Situated a bit further from the bustling Klaipeda city, Palanga has the beautiful nature available to everyone. Unlike such a popular trend in many countries where hotels take over the beaches, in Lithuania, all the coast of the Baltic Sea is public and natural. So even if you stay at a fancy hotel, you still need to walk to the beach through a pine tree forest. Palanga Resort is often called the summer capital of Lithuania, as lots of people, businesses and entertainment move here from the largest cities. If you come here in the summer, you'll find the bustling city center, lots of good and bad restaurants, busy nightclubs, concerts and other events. Most of this is situated in the main pedestrian street and around it. The main street leads from the city center straight to the sea and Palanga Bridge, the main attraction in Palanga. The L-shaped pier is almost 500 meters long and it leads the way far into the sea. It is visitors one of the favorite places to watch a sunset. On both sides of the bridge, the beach gets the most crowded, as there are many activities to do there, from beach bars to volleyball competitions, water cycle rent, and more. These drone shots were filmed on probably the most crowded beach day of the summer in 2022. It was in the middle of August during a long weekend. This is as crowded as it gets in Palanga. Going back to the main street, close by to the bridge, there is another symbol of Palanga. The fountain with the sculpture of Eurate and Castitis, one of the most famous Lithuanian legends. Once upon a time, a mermaid goddess, Eurate, lived in the Baltic Sea in a palace made of amber. A young fisherman named Castitis was fishing in the sea and the mermaid fell in love with him. They moved in together to the Amber Palace. But the thunder god Perkunas found out about their love, became furious and struck the Amber Palace, which exploded into millions of pieces. That is one explanation why pieces of amber come ashore after storms of the Baltic Sea. Palanga has many more stories to tell, and one of them is its rich history. It is not a new city. Palanga is known since the 13th century, and in the 15th, 17th centuries, it was the most important port in Lithuania. But in the 19th century, it became popular as a resort, when Count Tiškevičiai bought and improved the city. There are a lot of remnants of Tiškevičiai input to the city, including the construction of Palanga Bridge. But the most prominent monument of their rule is Palanga Manor House. It was built in the end of 19th century in neo-Renaissance style and surrounded with crisp, expansive park. The manor today is not just beautiful to look at, but also has the largest amber museum in Lithuania, with a collection of more than 5,000 embers. Behind the manor there is a beautiful rose garden, which is a part of a massive 100 hectare size park surrounding the manor. The Botanical Park, also called Berute Park, is one of the most famous parks in Lithuania. Not only it has a beautifully shaped landscape with ponds and ancient trees, it is so close to the sea that you can hear the sound of the waves while walking there. It was designed in the 19th century by famous French landscape architect Edouard François André, and it is still kept at its top shape to this day. The park is not just great for a quiet escape from the busy streets of Palanga, but there also are a few things to see here beside the manor. There is Beruta Hill, which has a small chapel and a view to the sea. Historically, before Christianity, the hill was a pagan sanctuary, where sun and moon movements were tracked and used as a calendar. 
Some more pagan relics are found on Samogitian Hill, where there is a small old pagan cemetery. In general, the park is large and it is easy to spend the better part of the day here, as it seems that the time stops while walking through the maze-like paths. Some more interesting places in Palanga are Palanga Sculpture Park and Tishkeviche Alley. There also are plenty of villas. One of them is a beautiful wooden 19th century villa that belonged to Tishkeviche too, which is now Palanga Resort Museum. Lastly, in the south of Palanga, you can see a bit of more natural side of the resort. A part of Payuris Regional Park, of which I mostly speak in my episode about Klaipeda District, is situated here. Nemirsata Landscape Reserve is home to some beautifully shaped sand dunes and unique local flora. To see all that, you can visit its one and a half kilometers long cognitive botanical trail. But the most of the reserve is actually not allowed to enter, except for the bicycle path that runs through it. If you enjoy riding a bike, this is a great place for a ride. And if you prefer longer cycling distances, then it's a great way to reach Palanga from Klaipeda. The path stretches even further north and reaches Shventoi Resort. In total, the bike path is 40 kilometers long. Now let's go to Shventoi. Probably the best way to describe it, that it's like Palanga's little sister. The resort isn't that much established as Palanga, but it strives to be something like it in the future. It also has one main restaurant and bar street, but it is more quiet here. At the end of the main street there is Shventoi River, that gave a name to the town and a hanging bridge over it called the Monkey Bridge. Shventoi is famous, or sometimes infamous, for its holiday cabins. Unlike Palanga, in Shventoi it is possible to get a place to stay almost at the beach, and that place is these tiny cabins, standing here from the summer times. It can be a good place to stay if you value the sound of the waves more than amenities. And of course, this leads us to the beach. Just like in Palanga, I visited here at the peak of the season and it was almost as much crowded, but unfortunately with less spots for beach activities than Palanga. Overall, Palanga and Chuantoy are made just for one purpose, an entertaining holiday. If it's that what you seek, then you'll like it here. If you prefer a more quiet holiday, then maybe you should uh, stay between the resorts Palanga and Chuantoy, or come here off-season, or instead go to Neringa municipality in the Koronian Spit. But Palanga is where the parties happen, so no wonder that it's called the summer capital of Lithuania. See you in Palanga. Thanks for watching.